Hello. I hope you are all uh, hearing me well. Uh, I'm Pavel Ripczyk and uh, I will present today to you uh, early intrusion detection with uh, the deception uh, approach. So my name is Pavel Ripczyk. I'm the CEO of the uh, company called Labyrinth and I will make uh, the presentation starting from introduction of uh, today's network monitoring challenges, going then through the uh, deception approach, how it can help to provide uh, network monitoring uh, solution. Who are we as Labyrinth, Labyrinth's architecture? And then I will go to the live uh, demo. And at the end, we will still have some time for questions and answers from your side. So, in today's world, the cybersecurity challenge, as we all know, there is more and more cyber threats. But the challenge is today how to detect the malicious behavior in your corporate network in an effective way. So, the main challenges today are like, for example, number of false positives. So, that is uh, the problem of alarms, which are not really the alarms at the end, and you need to spend time to investigate on this. Uh, solutions are getting more and more complex, so you need to have put a lot of effort and uh, human resources uh, to use the tools. Uh, information coming from different products and solutions is overloading many times the cybersecurity team, security operation centers. And at the end of the day, what is the main challenge is that you need to detect as soon as possible and react quickly to stop the breaches in your network. So, with all these cybersecurity challenges in mind, uh, we created a labyrinth platform. We created a solution, a tool to be able to quickly detect, but without, uh, let's say, too many resources and too many, too much, too big hustle on that. So let me move to the next slide, and I would like to speak about very interesting uh, article. The link you will find in the presentation from Allianz. It's an insurance company, and every year they publish so-called Allianz Risk Barometer. It's an insurance company, so they speak about risks. As you can see. The risk number one from the report, and that's one of the of the of the interesting things here, is that ransomware attacks, data bridges will increase. That's of course obvious. Everyone speaks about it. Alliance also speaks about AI, not only in a good sense, but also AI used by the attackers to be more effective with the cyber attacks. So we need to be aware that attackers also are getting more and more advanced tools in their hands to make the attack successful. Many companies are also facing these days a problem of the cybersecurity teams. So it's very hard to find specialists, especially if you are a big organization and there is more and more, uh, let's say, uh, vectors of the attack for your organization. But Today, I would like to highlight one conclusion point from Allianz from that report is about early threat detection. As a conclusion, Allianz states that the most important part today is to detect the cyber threat in the early stage of an attack. Otherwise, it becomes very complicated, not impossible, but very complicated to detect the cyber threat when it's already inside your network. And this is also the reason why we introduce our part platform as a great tool for early threat detection, early intrusion detection for your organization. Our solution goal is to be deployed inside of your network. So we are deception based threat detection based on honeypots, but those honeypots and the whole deception platform we deploy inside your network, so behind the perimeter security. So it's not a honeypot that it's placed in internet and getting a lot of noise from outside world. We are placed inside the network. I could say we are like smoke detector for your house. 
So you don't put smoke detector outside, otherwise you will get a lot of noise, your neighbor smoking, making a grill or other stuff. We are more inside the network of the organization. I could say in every segment of the network or just the segments that you would select for monitoring based on deception platform. It's the same story like you are selecting smoke detector. You might not place it in every room of your house, but just in the rooms where the risk of possible smoke is the highest. So that's how we build the solution. The platform is very easy. We made a lot of effort to make it as easy as possible for the deployment. Later, I will present you during the live demo the all needed required steps for uh, configuration. Basically, we have two virtual appliances which are mandatory for the whole platform. One is called admin VM, the management console. So it's one virtual appliance. The second one is called worker VM. This worker VM, it's a platform on which we will automate deployment of points points in other words are the honeypots or decoys that will play a decent role in the network monitoring approach done by labyrinth admin vm and worker vm we support uh, several platforms starting from vmware microsoft hyper-v and proxmox we support as well cloud deployment with microsoft azure we also have on our roadmap support for Google Cloud and AWS. The third element of our infrastructure, of, of our architecture, optional module, it's called CDER agent. This is agent that you optionally can deploy on workstations. We support Linux and Windows workstations. This agent is very lightweight and this agent is responsible for spreading fake files among the workstation. For example, fake RDP profile, fake link or fake file with SSH keys for the SSH server. So once again, the role of the agent is to spread files which lure the attacker into the traps. Uh, our solution is great because it offers also a lot of integrations. So you can send incidents from our solution to CM, IBM Curator, Splunk, or other CM products. We can also immediately apply an action. So we can send message to a edge firewall and for example, block the attacker's IP at the edge or at internal firewall, depending on your infrastructure. So once again, it's very easy. Two appliances at minimum, you can have multiple worker VMs if you wish. So, for example, different VLAN, different set of traps, different location, different data center. It's very scalable platform. And the main benefit is that we don't need to touch your existing infrastructure. So we do not require from you to adjust the infrastructure for our needs. I will present, as I said later, the full functional uh, web interface and also I will discuss the infrastructure. The business values. So it's a very effective platform to stop the sophist sophisticated threats in your network by analyzing its behavior, by analyzing how do they interact with our uh, fake uh, systems. There is zero impact on performance because you do not connect our solution in any how in line. So we don't need to play with uh, mis changing the configuration of your, of your equipment inside your network. The implementation is very simple. We have as well very good uh, documentation of the solution. So in majority, our partners our customers, they are able to deploy the product by themselves just by reading the, the, the documentation we deliver within the product. And we are also able to very highly reduce the cost of implementation because our solution is passive. We do not collect a lot of logs from external systems because we don't need to do it. So a lot of challenges uh, that comes with uh, regular 
network monitoring tool are not present within Labyrinth Deception platform. Our team, so now I will speak shortly about Labyrinth. We were founded in 2019. Our headquarter is in a city called Zabrze in Poland. We have now around 30 customers uh, worldwide, uh, mainly from SMB or also large enterprise global accounts, uh, where our solution is deployed among all the continents. We have now 16 people in the team uh, based in Poland, Ukraine and Germany. So in those three countries, we are operating with our people, our team. You can follow see follow us on linkedin uh, you can see our youtube channel where we provide content about our product you can also visit our official website and LoopTech is our exclusive distributor in the region as you can see on the pictures uh, that are the pictures from this year events uh, we were present at some events like sock days uh, we are present uh, we were present last week at itza in germany the biggest uh, european cybersecurity event presenting our product to new customers and new partners one picture you might see it's from basketball game because labyrinth is proudly a sponsor of basketball team uh, from the city where our headquarters is and we are also involved in you know promoting a healthy uh, way of life with sport engagement for young kids uh, but they also have a team in uh, polish uh, basketball league and we are sponsor of that team so that is our involvement in the local community and we are very proud of this so i will move to our vision so basically we want to shift the power in favor of defenders so there is a very good example of that you know you guys as the end customers you are you need to cover a lot of holes in the network to protect uh, your uh, customers or your network uh, where attacker only needs to find one hole so what we try to do with labyrinth is to shift that balance and provide you with a tool which you thanks to which you will make the uh, job of the attackers much more harder so our main mission and that's uh, part of our mission for the roadmap is to make the solution as simple as possible keeping in mind the keeping in mind the efficiency of the solution and efficiency in detecting the bad guys in your network uh, we have good reviews on Gartner, so if you visit uh, Gartner uh, Peer Insight, you will see, you will find Labyrinth Deception platform there. We have very good customers reviews on uh, G2.com. It's another portal where you can look for different software. We are focused only on doing this deception solution, so we are not providing any other uh, kind of product for cybersecurity. Our main solution is cyber deception. So, as I mentioned before, there are, let's say, four components of the solution. Admin VM, the central console. We support airbag access control, so role-based access control for the solution. We support tenancy, multi-tenancy. So we have tenants and you can split the whole infrastructure among your customer if you are a service provider. But even if you are end user, sometimes you are representing group of companies and you would like to deploy the deception concept for each group member with separate administrative rights. That's possible with Labyrinth. Worker VM is the host that it's hosting the points and points are the uh, simulates of the real systems. So these are the honeypots that some people call it that we are uh, providing. We have different types of points for IT, like SSH server, database, Postgres, SQL, uh, MySQL. Uh, we have Windows hosts. We have a possibility to clone web servers. So if you have production web server, we can clone it. So for attacker, it will look exactly the same like the production one. But of course, in our points, we will include a lot of vulnerabilities so that the attacker, when doing some kind of reconnaissance in the network, will possibly uh, make his focus on the fake points instead of the real systems. The last optional is the CDR agent. It's the endpoint 
uh, agent that you deploy on the endpoint and that one is spreading the fake files and I will demonstrate it as well during my live demo presentation. Once again, the architecture, including CDR agent, which will direct the attacker, lure the attacker into the points. Points are interactive, so it's not only that you get alarm or notification when the point is, let's say, touched, but we are having interactive decoys, interactive honeypots. So we want as well to postpone the whole attack by keeping the attacker busy playing with our points, decoys, honeypots, whatever uh, name you will use it for it. And then, of course, as I said, we can stay by notifying you, but we can also provide response with the products we have integration with. We are also open for new integrations. We are working closely with LoopTech to introduce next year some integrations with the products from LoopTech portfolio, like NACView, Fudo. We are very keen to do it. There are some interesting use cases to do that. And uh, you can benefit from this as well if you are using already some of these uh, products. So once again, uh, just to illustrate a bit the strategy of the deception, like I said, the attacker, when he is inside your network, he will try to find one place, one vulnerability, one hole in your network to make the attack completed. And our role with deception is to put as many fake holes in your network. So the attacker, we will increase the possibility that the attacker will not catch the real system, but will dive into uh, the rabbit hole of labyrinth. And that's why our company is called Labyrinth, because we want to keep the attacker in the labyrinth of illusion that he is actually connected to the real infrastructure playing with the decoys. Also, one of the differences between deception platform and standalone honeypots is that our points are connected to each other. So if you are able to hack one point, for example, SSH server, it will guide you to connect also to database, then from database to fake DNS servers, maybe to fake uh, Fortinet instance. So all of this is part of our strategy for intrusion detection system and network monitoring. How you can see, so this is example of the uh, infrastructure with several segments, uh, DMZ, LAN1, LAN2, maybe some OT segment with PLC controllers, different systems, different type of infrastructure, very well segmented network here. Of course, you might have less network segments more, but just a simple topology. And then if we add, unfortunately, I see that the animation does not work, but in each of these segments, you could place several decoys, several, uh, I would say, uh, fake systems that will, uh, that will uh, imitate uh, real system and a hacker will play with it <coughs> instead of playing with the real uh, real servers. <clears throat> so now we will move to uh, live demo. I will illustrate for you uh, how you can uh, uh, configure Labyrinth Deception Platform. Once again, as I said, you have two virtual machines, admin console, worker VM, and then on the top, you have the optional agent. So now I will switch to share my screen. Share the screen, share entire screen. Now you should uh, be able to see it. I will switch to uh, my web interface. I hope it's all working fine because I switched from, from the live stream. Uh, okay, so let's continue. So when you connect to Labyrinth, I did a bit zoom in just for you to see it maybe better on your computer. As I said from the beginning, Labyrinth is supporting multi-tenancy. So it's not uh, just a different license, but basically it's included in the, in the product. So I can switch between different tenants. I'm now in the tenant, which is called Sales Demo. I can have a brief dashboard, <clears throat> nothing specific. It's it's my at my home, so all the attacks are emulated by me. 
I can see last month, so I can see per uh, network segment or per type of the honeypot how many alerts I have. I can quickly view when there was rise of the alerts. When I click it, I will be uh, redirected to the alerts. So very simple dashboard. We see that uh, multiple customers, depending on the size, either they have or they have demand or they want to have a very, very simple dashboard or basically they are sending all the logs to CM or to SOC. So in that case for CM or for SOC, we are just another source of alerts which are later combined with uh, logs coming or events coming from other systems. So if customer is building this kind of XDR or SOC concept with the SOC triad, we are just another source of information for such logs. You can generate a report uh, every month, every week to see the summary uh, results of the detections. So, as I said, configuration is very easy. So, when you start configuring Labyrinth after the deployment, deployment is also very easy. You basically uh, configure. Uh, okay, you don't see my screen, as I say, uh, as I noticed. Uh, yeah, it's freezed. Uh, is it still freezed? Okay. Is it better now, Nor? Just to confirm before I continue. Ah, only my picture. Okay. So for my picture, it's freezed, but uh, maybe it's because I switched the uh, interface. So let's continue with the presentation. So uh, first step of configuring Labyrinth is to define your local network in which we will put our points. So as you can see, we have here uh, three networks. So it's very simple. You just tell what IP address has the network. Then you go to details and then we see what license you have because Labyrinth is licensed per number of points. I see that I have license for 50 points. You configure the list of the IP addresses which will be used by our points. So it's also very important that our points, our honeypots, each of them will have its own network stack, including MAC address, IP address. So all of them are isolated from each other. We can also support VLANs. So basically you start with the network configuration. And then as you can see, we made it very simple. You don't need to think about what type of uh, how to configure each honeypot separately. This was always the problem with honeypots that they were hard to maintain. With our solution, we made it very easy. So basically you say, I want to have 10 40 gates. I want to have two Siemens controllers. I want to have some number of uh, SSH servers. I want to have free workstations. I want to have uh, another Siemens platform and you need to select it, NetBIOS, Postgres, and you are done. You basically click apply and those decoys will be deployed. So it's very easy. In my case, as I said, I have three networks with different VLAN and with different number of points, depending of course on my license. We can go to the list and I can see now which uh, points for this tenant, because I remind you, we can work as well with tenants, which are already started. And I see the name, the ID, the location, the host name. Host name, as you probably saw before, if I go to the list, I can select, uh, sorry, I can select in the Honeynet, I can select the dictionary of host names. Okay, so for example, if in your case you have a specific syntax, specific naming convention for naming the host names, you can create the list and uh, our solution will take from this list uh, the names when it will auto create for you the honey pots. As you can see, every honey pot has a different IP address, different MAC address, and you get the status, if it's running, if it's stopped, if there is maybe some error, but in many cases, it will be in running state. 
And if you would like to tune, so if you want to change the default configuration, you can go to details and then you will have ability to change the point and change the configuration of the point. For example, you would like to have different MAC addresses. You would like to emulate more network cards and stuff like that. So it's basically for tuning the configuration for something else than the default one. But by default, it's really click, 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 and the configuration and the deployment is done. So it's very easy. Of course, every type of decoy, if it's a 40 gate emulation, if it's MQTT, they will have, of course, different parameters to change. Like for instance, let's look at Siemens, also different type of stuff. Some of the points are also active, so they are generating some traffic, but they have high level of emulation. Now I will try to connect to one decoy just to show you how does it look like. I hope you see my screen well. I will maybe extend it that way. Okay, so now I will connect to one decoy. I know the login and password attacker. Uh, will need to uh, will need to guess the password with brute force or whatever and now you can see if i do ping 888 i'm able to ping so the decoy the point itself behaves like it would be a normal host so i can stop it as well i can display some stuff uh, and it should look like a real system like a real ssh server but of course it's not the beauty of labyrinth is also that the decoys are very lightweight so you can put a lot of them in terms of number of instances in your network just to create if you remember the red dots as much noise as possible in the network noise of fake systems of course uh, our decoys are also able to generate some traffic so they look like a real system. So even if someone is sniffing the network, checking if there is, let's say, live in with that host, that they are not just passively listening, we are able to emulate this. Once again, some decoys are very interactive. Some decoys will be less interactive. Uh, and for instance, if we go to Fortinet, you can try to log in. This is the Fortinet decoy that it's running. Of course, I will have authentication failure, but if somebody would like to, uh, you know, hack a bit for a known vulnerability of Fortinet, we will catch it as well. And But we will try to make the guy busy. We will make some delays in refreshing the page and so on. Of course, doing it in the way that attacker will still believe that it's a real system. Now, Cedar agent. If you remember, I explained that there is an optional engine or an optional agent for uh, Linux or Windows workstations. You can generate the installation files uh, depending on the platform and deploy it. And then this agent is very smart agent. I just need to switch to another uh, tenant where we have the agent deployed. You deploy the agent. The agent connects back to central console and it's looking what type of uh, points you deployed. You deployed RDP, uh, SSH, database, and based on that information on the endpoint, we are creating files, okay? Which are, of course, fail files that if attacker founds them, like for example, here a backup link for a database, but in that link, you will have connection on FTP to the FTP decoy, okay? So let's say this agent is providing you a lot of help, a lot of, uh, you can save a lot of time because of course you could manually deploy such files, but the goal is that you do it quickly in scalable manner, automatically referring to the configuration that you have on the central console. So that's the approach and that's the goal of that part. Once again, because maybe I did not say it very clearly, Labyrinth platform is fully deployed in your infrastructure. 
So you, we, it does not connect or does not send any data to the cloud. Everything stays in your network. So the admin console, the worker node, and the agent, of course, it's deployed among your workstations and no data leaves your infrastructure. We can also, when the attack is completed, I will present to you in a second, how do we do alerting, but we are also trying to visualize when the uh, points or the decoys were uh, touched, we can illustrate it, which type of decoy was touched, where the attack started. And then of course, if you click on the icon, you will get the alerts which are related to this uh, icon or to this graph. When speaking about alerts, so I can see a lot of alerts in my uh, network that were deployed. Uh, maybe let's look at the sales demo where we connected with our, uh, when we connected with SSH. So on every alert, we have small incident uh, response part. So you can say, okay, this is uh, green status. Uh, we ignore it uh, because it's Pavel's test. So you can do stuff like that. Uh, but if you want to go a bit deeper, for example, we have here, uh, okay, this is maybe not so interesting. Let's look at this one. So here we have the connection to the SSH server. We are also providing the MITRE framework mapping. We can see also uh, what was the client IP and what additional commands were used during the connection. Uh, you can also have detailed uh, events so we can see what actually, how connection was long, what commands were triggered during the session. So you have all the information that it's helpful for uh, the analyst to understand what happened. But basically the messages accumulate the, the events. So you just see the general one and then you can go to details and to see the events which are related for the uh, for the alert. Okay, so of course, different alert, different types of messages or events made appear in the product. You are also able to download a pickup file. So we are recording the packets which were taking part of. Uh, triggering the alarm that you see here, and they can be part of incident uh, response or case report uh, for uh, next, uh, let's say, uh, SOC team or uh, from L1 or L2, L23, depending on how your SOC or your response team is built. Of course, we also provide um, uh, audit log, so if you want to see uh, what happened over the time with the platform, it's very uh, detailed, so you can see if some administrator was switching between tenants, if he was configuring something, so it's all very well auditable. Uh, for connection to this interface, we are supporting MFA, multi-factor authentication, so if you have any solution that it's allowing to you know, scan QR code and add the uh, OTP uh, passphrase, it's possible, very easy to deploy with Labyrinth as well. On the notes section, I can monitor my tenants and uh, worker nodes. So I have one admin console. And for example, in one data center, I have one set of traps. In another data center, I have another uh, set of traps. So as I said, it's very scalable. You can monitor it from one console very easy. Multi-tenancy. So if you want to split the configuration among different divisions, different customers if you are partner it's also possible we have it integrated with our product uh, from the beginning the last thing i would like to show you because of course there is more but uh, i think for the importance uh, for the introduction session about labyrinth are the integrations so we do the integrations free of charge so if you have any product that uh, is able to communicate through REST API, our product also, you can uh, connect to it through API and uh, uh, get some information or influence the configuration. But in that case of integrations, we have possibility 
to have, let's call it shortly, reaction, response. So the two first examples, CrowdStrike, EDR, or FortiGate, are examples of products where we can send uh, information about the IP address of the attacker, and we can ask these products, these uh, vendors, uh, if they are deployed in the infrastructure, to block these IP addresses in the network. Microsoft Teams, Slack, SMTP, this is about notifying, okay? So when we detect something, we can send email, we can send message to Microsoft Teams, or we can send message to Slack, depending on which product you are using. Same for CM integration. We can work with every CM on the market just by sending syslog. Um, but for Splunk and for Curator, we have additional uh, integration done. We call it two-way integration, where we are also querying uh, Splunk and Curator to enrich our own logs. Uh, recent integration with Trellix, so X McAfee, uh, we also can do the same as with CrowdStrike and FortiGate. But as I said, if you have any product in your network and you have a use case that if Labyrinth detects something, we should do something on that product, we are doing this uh, without any cost, of course, unless you provide us access to that solution and you will tell us what is the use case that you would like us to implement. Because it's very easy for us to implement, but of course there needs to be a use case behind. So thank you for that part. I will come back to my presentation right now. So let me close this source and I will come back to my presentation. Probably I'm back moving, so you can see that I'm again alive. Uh, and it's not uh, because of internet, but probably because I changed the window. Uh, that's why you could not see me moving anymore. So just to conclude, uh, I would like to uh, speak once again about the value of our solution. What we see on the market with existing customers who, of course, are looking for different types of products, our solution is the most effective way to monitor the network. Okay, deception is a great approach to do intrusion detection, especially when we think about inside threat detection. Not only for insiders, of course, but in general, if we would like to detect something after that something, uh, let's say, breach the parameter security like firewalls or other stuff. It's easy to deploy and maintain. Uh, we are as well allowing to slow down the attack. For some organizations, it will be as well important to get knowledge on the behavior of the attacker because we are logging all the activities of the attacker inside the network. So it brings another, I would say, intelligence for the SOC uh, team. Uh, what is important is that you can do proof of concept uh, LoopTech can support you together with us, so you can deploy the solution, play with it. Uh, my always big advice is to test the solution when you have an audit or red teaming activity. Of course, you don't tell red teamers that you have uh, uh, fake systems inside your network, but just to prove for yourself that that kind of tool can be effective. So red team people will not recognize our solution in the network. Uh, the licensing is very basic. Uh, basically, you calculate the number of traps you need, and we sell it in the package of 10 traps. So even starting, maybe not POC, but starting purchase of 10 traps is very effective. For the details, please contact the Loop Tech team. They will explain you all the details, how to get the installation, uh, how to get the support and also the budgeting uh, 